Microsoft's 13.5-inch Surface Laptop 4 has a few key internal changes, making this a much better value than before, and it has a couple standout features that might make you want to buy it instead of a different Windows laptop, but depending on your use case, there are also two downsides that you have to know about if you're going to buy one. Before I get into everything you need to know, I want to thank Microsoft and Micro Center for sending us the Intel version for this review. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics, from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else you need to build a PC. They also have a huge variety of desktops, laptops, and all the accessories that you need. Not only that, but also highly trained staff and low prices. Check out our local Micro Center today to get your hands on a variety of products before purchasing, or use the link down below to view the Surface Laptop 4 at microcenter.com. They're also giving away free Bluetooth headphones to my viewers with no purchase necessary. Just grab a coupon from the link below below and head to a local micro center. We've got two versions of the Surface Laptop 4. Our blue one is an Intel version and the black has an AMD processor and I'll let you know which one you should buy. On the outside, they look identical to the previous versions, either all aluminum or an Alcantara top, which is soft touch, which does feel less premium but very comfy, and I would actually prefer this one if you are careful to keep it clean. Last year, I praised the overall look since it was modern and premium, but lots of companies have stepped up their latest laptops with better materials and slimmer bezels, so these thicker bezels do look a bit dated in 2021. In those bezels, we have a 720p webcam with Windows Hello Lock login, which I love, and the mics are on the front, so quality for video conferencing is also quite good. Here's how the webcam looks and how the microphones sound. It's not class leading, but it is very good for the money, especially if you're buying the base model. I have to say that my second favorite thing about the Surface Laptop 4 is a sharp display with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. Most Windows laptops come with a 16 by 9 screen, and some have now moved to 16 by 10, but 3 by 2 allows you to have much more vertical space which is really helpful while being productive on a 13 inch screen. With that, I love that Microsoft is using a custom resolution of 2256 by 1504 which equals to 201 pixels per inch where most competitors use 1080p based screens which are noticeably less detailed or 4K screens which really drain battery life. This resolution is a perfect middle ground. Brightness is still the same 400 nits which used to be great but now the best laptops use 500 nit displays so it's now average, and with that, the display is still glossy, so you have a harder time seeing it outdoors or in bright rooms because of reflections, so you will need to max out the brightness most of the time. The keyboard is also a strong point of this laptop, and it's very easy to quickly and accurately type on. The trackpad is also really good, being a large and very responsive trackpad, and although it is using a diving board design, it has a nice, even feel. Another thing that really impressed us was the speaker quality. Now, if you're trying to find speaker grills on the Surface Laptop 4, you will not find them because the speakers are actually beneath the keyboard, and to our surprise, they actually sound great. They're not only louder and have better sound quality than most Windows laptops, but they're actually slightly louder than the 13-inch MacBook Pro. The sound quality isn't quite as good, but it's still very close. I have to say that they're one of the best speakers we've heard on a 13-inch Windows laptop and more than enough for streaming shows and movies. The other thing I have to praise this laptop for is the software. Since it's coming directly from Microsoft, it's using a very clean version of Windows without all the extra software from the manufacturers or bloatware like games, antivirus, and other trials that you have to deal with. What really annoys me is the extra software that you have to find and tweak in order to get the full performance of your machine on top of what's already built into Windows, so here you don't have to deal with any of that. And before I get into my favorite change with the Surface Laptop 4, let's talk about the biggest downside in my opinion, and that's that is the ports. We're still getting a full-size USB-A port for those legacy connections, which is always nice to have, and a USB Type-C port for more modern devices and cables, along with the standard headphone jack and Microsoft's magnetic surface connection port that will instantly disconnect if you tug on the cable. Although the USB Type-C port can be used for charging, this is the port that is used to charge the laptop with the included 65 watt charger, which also includes an additional standard USB port, which can be used as long as the charge is plugged into the wall. Last year, we complained that the USB-C port doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, which means it doesn't get those ultra-fast speeds, and you also
also can't connect an external PCI or graphics card unit to the laptop to boost the graphics, but we didn't make it a huge deal because not everybody needs that and laptops back then were just starting to add these ports. Well now, most if not all laptops in this category not only switch to Thunderbolt 4, but they have two of these really capable and future-proof ports, so it's now really weird to see that a new 2021 laptop doesn't even have one Thunderbolt 4 port. Microsoft says it's because Thunderbolt isn't as secure, but every other company is using it, and while I can understand what they're saying, what I can't understand is that the only ports that they include seem to only run at 5 gigabits per second, meaning transferring an SSD file maxes out at around 350 megabytes per second real-world speed. Now, a few websites have listed it at full 10 gigabit per second, but most sites don't mention the speed, just like Microsoft doesn't, which is weird because for their proprietary dock, they actually list 10 gigabit per second for each port. Every fast device that I attached only connected at the slower speed, so to me, it seems that these ports are in fact the slowest USB 3, which makes no sense if you're not going to include Thunderbolt. Why not just put in the fastest USB, like my other AMD laptop? I personally don't think there's a good excuse for all the ports running at that faster speed if you have the expensive dock, but half speed if you only have the laptop or you can't bring that 1.2 pound dock with you that does need to be plugged into the wall. And now let's talk about my favorite part of the new laptop, and that is actually the base model. A few years ago, it came with 128 gigabytes of SSD and four gigabytes of RAM, which was really hard to recommend. And the following year, the RAM bumped up to eight gigs, but stayed at 128 gigs of SSD. But this year, you get eight gigs with 256 gigs of storage, which is usable for most people. And it comes with an AMD six core processor that actually beats out the more expensive Intel i5 option that has a $300 higher base price tag while it gets better battery life as well. Of course, we have higher end options like an i7, which has better graphics and slightly faster CPU than i5, but those cost a lot more. And then you need to start looking at other laptops like the XPS 9310 that competes better at that higher price tag. But personally, if I was buying a Surface Laptop 4, that base spec is now a killer value for somebody that needs a Windows Ultrabook and doesn't need Thunderbolt. You get a minimalistic design with a clean Windows install, a nice and sharp touchscreen, above average speakers, webcam, mic, keyboard, and trackpad, really good battery life, and great performance for a base spec. Now, of course, I do have to mention the MacBook Air, which comes in at the same exact price point, but is better in each one of those categories. But if you need Windows or you just don't like Mac OS and you're looking to spend around $1,000, this machine would be my choice. If you wanna see us compare the Surface Laptop 4 to the M1 MacBook Air, you guys can click that video right over there. And if you enjoyed this review, click that circle above to subscribe and help us reach 1 million subscribers before the end of this year. We would greatly appreciate it. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.